he's going. Down here in southern West Virginia, had about an hour and a half drive up through the mountains. It's really nice up here. Got some cloud and some wind rolling in right now, but I got the uh, pack all set up. I got my tripod, three batteries, all my lenses. So um, running a pretty heavy pack tonight. Got about a mile or so hike up to this Raptor Observatory. I think it used to be an old fire tower, and now um, people just go up there and you know watch Raptor migrations and stuff like that. So. Always wanted to come up here. First time I've uh, had the chance. I'm gonna meet up with my buddy Caleb. He's gonna be up here in a bit. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start walking up just to you know maximize daylight as much as possible. It's almost eight o'clock now, so uh, sun goes down in about an hour or so. So I want to get up there and try and find some compositions and stuff like that that I like, and uh, might try and run a day to night time lapse and uh, freelance a little bit and test it out tonight. So. Hopefully these clouds pass on by. I don't know if you can see it's pretty cloudy right now. The wind's kicking up, so hopefully it clears up and it lays down tonight around midnight and the Milky Way will be popping and uh, show you some images. Almost to the top. Hopefully, these clouds roll through and it clears up tonight. It's gonna be a really cool composition of this tower, so. Man, super pretty up here. Oh wow. Should be pretty good. That's awesome. Incredible. I don't know how folks in the Midwest do it. Flatland sucks. <laughs> I gotta get to the mountains. That's insane. Oh, it's so cool. Let's go inside. Pretty sweet. Man. This is going to be an awesome night. I really hope the clouds clear, but even if they don't, this is freaking awesome. The, the hope is to get on top of that rock over there and uh, we'll shoot this way and hopefully the Milky Way will be arching over top and we can get that. A little bit dicey. That's a pretty sharp point, so it'll be a little bit of a scramble to set up there safely, so should be... Uh, be pretty sweet. I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, gear out and set up and try and find some compositions I like. So. so we'll see how long I can run this time lapse for or if I'm gonna run a time lapse. It's a good question, but I uh, try and get set up here and poke around and see what kind of compositions I like. I really, I mean, anything with the, uh, the tower itself is gonna be good. Obviously, I need to pull up uh, photo pills and see where the Milky Way is gonna be and what time and try and plan things out that way. But the sunset is just looking like it's gonna be incredible. So I'm really just trying to set up for that right now. And I just wanna take a bunch of big panoramas and stuff like that and then get the uh, 70 to 200 on and try and do some, you know, really focused shots on some buildings um, or some hay fields or something like that farther out. So 
plenty of stuff to photograph. It's a little bit overwhelming to, you know, prioritize your time while it's still daylight and try and get everything set up for tonight. But uh, really, really happy I decided to come out here for the night because there's no one up here except for Caleb. He'll be here in a little bit and uh, should be uh, good conditions. There's still a bunch of clouds in the sky, but nah, I'm hoping that they roll out and it, it clears up here. So we'll see what we can get into. I'll let you uh, get filled in once I get things on the, the tripod and uh, set up. All right, the sun's just about to go down. I apologize for the wind noise. It's all going up here. So. Just waiting to take a couple uh, sunset shots. I just got a bracket going. Just something real simple, nothing fancy. Just bracketing. Uh, three value, three image bracket. So just doing that to pass the time. Um, nobody showed up yet, so that's good. And uh, I'm going to try and start finding a little spot for the night. And uh, I think that the last, I'm trying to find the spot that I was at last time. So the spot where my tripod was. Last time I was here, so I can just recreate that and everything's good. So it's somewhere in here, I know. So I don't know. I'll mess around with the composition once I put the 20 millimeter on and uh, we'll get started here shortly. So uh, can't really complain so far, so good. I've um, got some really cool looking clouds up here. Just had a whole group of. Uh, uh, crows or ravens pop up and they were like right on top of me and I actually got one in an image Right There I don't know if you can see him or not, but he's right there. So that'd be kind of cool to have in a photo um, And not photoshopping birds <laughs> uh, So should be a good night So Sunset has come and gone and trying to get set up in the next way on some rocks and stuff like that. Look at this dude. Freaking millipede. Pretty, pretty neat. So the goal. Is the, oh, it's a big millipede. No, he's like four inches long. He's huge. But uh, the goal is to get it set up to do some blue hour foreground stuff at super low ISO and then wait for the Milky Way to pop up and then blend the two exposures. So you've got a nice, clean, detailed foreground and uh, no noise in it. And you can stack your uh, stars on top of that. So hopefully this works. I doubt it does, but kind of how it goes for the first time you visit somewhere you got to get overwhelmed first and freak out about how cool it is and then come back again and actually get work done so get set up all right it is now blue hour and uh, I'm all set up got my intervalometer going and just to show you what I'm setting at um, my ball head I don't know if you can see that it's set at 90 degrees right now so as I said, I was shooting a pan I'm going to shoot a big panorama with this uh, tower in the background. So with that being said, I've got my tripod level, my camera level, and uh, the Milky Way is going to be back over here um, around midnight or so. So I've got it set at 90 degrees right now. So 180 degrees from 90 is 270. So I'm going to take enough frames to reach all the way around to 270, and then that will give me enough overlap. Um, between each frame where I can crop the edges and then you know have a nice clean arching Milky Way panorama over this um, tower right here so I'm gonna go ahead and start shooting I'm shooting at f9 um, right now I'm in bulb mode at ISO 100 and I am manual focus with a 20 millimeter um, Sony 1.8 G lens and uh, we'll go ahead and start cracking a few images off here and uh, hopefully this will be a solid foreground and uh, we won't have to worry too terribly much about the sky. I'm hoping it clears up a little bit. Of course, you know, some clouds roll in 
and uh, that's just how it goes. So we will uh, we'll see what happens, and I'll let you know what we get when uh, we get going. So we're shooting. We'll have a foreground in about three minutes. So uh, yeah. So just rotating a little bit at a time. I really, really like to have at least 60, 70 percent or more overlap doing these big panos. They just stitch so, so, so much better when you have more overlap. Lightroom and Photoshop can align them so much better when they have more points to base the merge off of. So keep your overlap more than less. You will always have better stitching if you have more overlap and it'll avoid a ton of headache when you get back to your computer and you're sitting down to edit and you wonder why stuff looks all wonky. So more overlap. You always want more overlap in panoramas. So it's about 10 o'clock now and the stars are starting to pop. So I'm setting up to do a panorama foreground at ISO 60, 640. Um, we'll probably try and do that at f4 or f5.6 or something like that. Um, probably have one or two minute exposures for each and then I'll stitch those together for the foreground and then I'm going to wait for the Milky Way to pop up and try and repeat that process. And for the sky I'll probably shoot f2.2 or f2.8 or something like that at ISO 3200 or 6400 and try and get 10 or so images for each slice of the panorama and then stack those together and then stitch them so have a little bit more detail and less noise in that full panel. Um, right now it's kind of tricky because my main subject is um, facing north. The uh, Milky Way is popping up south southeast and it'll work its way west throughout the night so not exactly the perfect composition to get that you know perfectly framed backlit uh, have the Milky Way over top of it but um, that's all right nothing to, uh, we can't work with so you're gonna get to shooting here and I uh, got Caleb he's up there right now setting up a time lapse so um, he's got two cameras going tonight I've got one and uh, there's another guy here um, they're taking photos too so not too bad right now it's pretty quiet uh, cool and windy but the skies are perfectly clear so should be able to get some good results Just finished up um, the first pano. I have the Milky Way core, well, pretty much everything going over the uh, uh, the building here. So far, it looks pretty solid. So we'll see how that turns out.
hiking out now. It's about 12.30 or 1. Um, clouds did clear some right here at the end, but the uh, Milky Way was so far um, just that vertical position um, in the sky this time of year. So the early clouds kind of killed my vision for tonight, but that's all right. Still got a couple images and um, that, that last shot I was taking of the building. I'm actually kind of excited to edit that. I uh, haven't done too much of that close-up type astrophotography. Oh, close-up, you know what I mean. Um, just like that detailed stacking of the foreground later in the in the night. I haven't done much of that when you're out here and uh, you want to you know keep taking photographs. You just got to keep uh, Keep pushing and trying to learn a little bit so if uh, I might just go ahead and end the video here and I'll do another editing video or I might just add on edits throughout this video I don't know but uh, yeah this will be the end of the first astrophotography video so I hope you enjoyed it <laughs>